In this episode, we head to Miranda's home state of New York, where we unwind on Long Island before getting into the hustle and bustle of Manhattan. Here we catch up with my best friend, Seneca, as she shows us the best local eats and gives us a guided tour of Central Park, followed by sunset at Riverside Park. The following day, we explore Manhattan by bike, from Harlem to the National September 11 Memorial and then onto the Brooklyn Bridge, crossing into Brooklyn for the evening. I catch up with my friend Andrew in Larchmont before meeting back up with Miranda in Midtown Manhattan for the ultimate view at the top of the rock and visiting the world famous Times Square. We head back to Long Island to visit the classic Coney Island and catch up with friends and family for the ultimate 4th of July weekend. Join us on Global Travel Stories. From our previous episode, we depart from Florida and arrive into New York, heading to my dad's home on the Great South Bay, Long Island. After a celebratory arrival dinner, Miranda's dad Jerry took us for a drive across the Robert Moses Bridge during a spectacular sunset. So what's the name of this bridge? Robert Moses. Robert Moses. Robert Moses is a very, uh, very big name all over the place, all over you know, the U.S. And who is Robert Moses? He's like the grandfather of parks, but he has kind of a, a, a reputation in a way of, of, of being a racist, because he built all the, the, the uh, turnpike, I mean, the, the roads too low for buses to, to, fit, to go through, to bring people in from the cities. Even more suburban. The view is very racist. Right. Yeah. So all the ethnic people lived in the city. Aside from the negative implication behind its design, the bridge is an architectural wonder connecting Long Island to the national seashore of Fire Island. With a few days rest up, we decide to explore the Great South Bay the best way you can, by boat. With the Robert Moses Bridge, Long Island, and Fire Island in the background, we decide to get some great shots of my dad's new boat. Make our way to Manhattan for a few days to meet up with our friend Seneca and explore the most populated city in the United States. 
After meeting in the Upper West Side, we make our way to the Jewel of Manhattan, Central Park. Alrighty, we're here in Central Park, New York City, Manhattan. We have Seneca with us. Hey, welcome. We're going to explore some of the, uh, the sites of Central Park and tomorrow we're going to do a big lap around some of Manhattan. Yeah, on bikes. Mm -hmm. At 843 acres, it is the most visited urban park in the United States, with an estimated 42 million visitors annually, and is the most filmed location in the world. Seneca's our local tour guide. Seneca, what are you going to tell us today? Okay, so today I'm going to tell you about what Manahata means. It means the island of many hills. Mm. Land of many hills. Because as you may or may not know, Manhattan is actually filled with many natural slopes and has many different kinds of geographies and landscapes, as you can see behind me here. This used to be a sheep, sheep meadow, hence right. the name. Sheep's Meadow. There you go. Look at that. So we just went past the Imagine Circle here in Central Park and pretty much across the road here is where John Lennon was killed, unfortunately. Um, here's the Dakota building. This is where he lived, his residence, and yes, quite a, a sad scenario. So we're going to have a quick look and check out some of that. Yeah, so we're at the front of the Dakota building and this is where John Lennon was shot uh, on the 8th of December 1980. Supposedly, it's been said to be one of the top 10 pizza places in New York. Ooh. Try the vodka slice. <laughs> you, vodka. you get drunk while you eat? Is that what it's about? If you, if you want to. If you eat enough. <laughs> this looks good. I have to show inside. sort of thing. That's the white, white slice. It's like multiple cheeses. Oh, nice. That one looks good. And you have plain. We need to document this moment. I've You've... been looking everywhere for these. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't been anywhere. Where did you find it? A bodega in New York City. And you got the last two, right? Yes. I should have used the pinchy claw to get it. <laughs> Go first. Okay, so we are in beautiful Riverside Park, as you can see. Um, it goes miles and miles up and down the, the Hudson. And to my right, you have all of the beautiful hydrangea bushes are about to be in full bloom, so it'll look like a sea of cotton candy in a few weeks. And then this rock here is called Mount Tom, and this is where Edgar Allan Poe used to write um, letters and poems at the top of this rock. He actually lived just on this block here when this used to be all farmhouses and farmland and a small little farmhouse and there's actually a street over here, I believe it's 84th and it's called Edgar Allan Poe Way. You're awesome. <laughs> There, Miranda. Cookies. From where? Fresh baked cookies from Levain Bakery. Yeah. 
This is the good stuff, right? Dig it. Look at this. <laughs> oh, delicious. Looks like more of a cake than a cookie. No, it's a cookie. It's just really thick, but it's chewy on the inside. We met some really cool locals enjoying the sunset at Riverside Park, along with their adorable four-legged furry children. The night drew to a close, we recovered early in preparation for our big day ahead. Alrighty, about to uh, start our tour of Manhattan and we're here on 129 West 81st Street in the Upper West End. Fans of Seinfeld would know this as Jerry Seinfeld's apartment, although it does look a little bit different and that's because they actually shot apartment blocks from Los Angeles of all places, but this is his actual physical address in the show, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so we're about to head to Central Park. We'll start here on the Upper West End, which is known for its brownstone buildings. It's a little bit different to other parts of Manhattan, so we'll see some of those buildings and some of that uh, architecture on our way through to Central Park. If you're not an annual member, it's an extra $3.99 uh, to unlock the bikes, but then that's for the whole day, basically. So, yeah, pretty good value. We're going to go check out Central Park, and then we'll go along the Hudson River down towards the uh, south end of town, downtown. much of the central and southern sections of the park the previous day, we decided to make our way north through the park up to the urban neighbourhood of Harlem via the Conservatory Garden and the Harlem Mere. Manhattan in Harlem right now and uh, we're about to go to a restaurant called Field Trip which I actually saw in a documentary on my flight over here and uh, they were talking about like these high-end restaurant chefs after COVID moving into more of the fast food industry but not sort of fast food as you think of it that greasy sort of stuff this is like healthy fast food with you know good quality restaurant sort of food so yeah, check this out has really good reviews too so this is the, uh, the veggie rice bowl for our oh, vegetarian. And this is a seafood gumbo. Gumbo! And the dragon fruit um, ice cream. Oh, it smells so good too. What'd you get? What is that? It's the fried chicken bowl. Oh. How's yours, Miranda? It's pretty delicious. Oh, yeah. it's gone. oh this is great. Oh, bon appetit. You'll have to try some. Yeah, so the consensus girls, what was it? The food was good? Delicious. 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 Yes, yeah, so that was uh, the fried chicken bowl. A fried chicken bowl. Yeah, that one was delicious. So field trip up in Harlem. Yeah, they bring in like a lot of really good healthy food to some of the probably less wealthier parts of the city. So that we're heading through Morningside Park and we are then going to get out to Riverside and head pretty much all the way down to the southern end of Manhattan.
Chiki, where are we? Hungarian pastry shop. Oh. Delicious. Yeah, it's amazing. So this is the carrot cake. This is the lemon cheesecake, one of the best cheesecakes I've ever had. This is slowly becoming like a food vlog. I don't know how. <laughs> this wasn't the intention, but... Well, you're in New York. Yeah. Try all the flavors, right? Thank you. So in the background here we have the Cathedral Church of St. John the Divine. Started construction in 1892 and it never has actually been fully finished. So it has gone through some different things throughout time including a big fire in 2001. And it is the sixth largest church in the world by area. Pretty cool. Alrighty, so we're just walking through Columbia University in uptown Manhattan. So Nick was saying here the trees in the Christmas time are completely lined with Christmas lights, so it's a really beautiful place to walk through if you're coming that time of the year. Tom's restaurant in the background there, famous for Seinfeld. I'm a huge Seinfeld fan, so first time I came to New York City, I had to stop there and have a meal. And the interior is nothing like what it is on Seinfeld, so completely different. They just use those external shots, but they completely cash in on the whole Seinfeld thing. You can see signs up the front that say Elaine and George, Jerry, Kramer, and uh, on the inside, all the food is sort of Seinfeld themed, so yeah, they cash in on a bit, but it is still cool. Uh, must do if you're a Seinfeld fan in New York. And this is on the Upper West Side near Columbia University. Check out some sites down there and uh, the goal is to make it to Brooklyn and potentially cross the Brooklyn Bridge. Beautiful day today, honestly. in a building is the Freedom Tower that we see right up there behind us. You can see here as well the names of the victims from the uh, World Trade Center attack. I think it's quite a beautiful and respectful memorial as well. It's nothing too extravagant and um, if you have a look at the size, it shows the size of the building as well, how big the building was. It uh, really just sort of stops and makes you think as well. In an instant. Both memorials for each individual site are located adjacent from one another and are equally as impressive, yet humble in acknowledging the victims of this tragic attack. So during Hurricane Sandy, there was a 14-foot wave recorded in the Hudson River right out here, which is one of the largest waves ever recorded on record um, to date. And this, complete, this area was completely demolished by Hurricane Sandy. It took months, if not even years, to repair and rebuild. So now New York City is focusing on coastal resiliency efforts to make sure that doesn't happen again when people... Jesus. Well, what about this bridge? What did you say about this bridge before? That bridge out there is the Marisano Bridge. It connects uh, Brooklyn to Staten Island, and that is named after Giovanni Verrazzano, who was from Tuscany, Italy, and he was one of the first explorers to find Manhattan and go up the Hudson, um, but he wound up turning back for whatever reason. He thought that his boat could continue to go, I believe. Um, he wound up continuing onwards south to the tropics, and he was eaten by cannibals. Nice. So the blue color represents the height of potential flooding from severe weather. That's insane. This height is calculated for a 20, 50, 100 year storm based on sea level rise estimates. Wow. So we're in uh, 
South Street Seaport. You're saying it's what one of the oldest areas in New York? Yep, it's one of the oldest neighborhoods in the city. And we have the Brooklyn Bridge just behind us there in the background. Alrighty, Chicky, where are we going? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. How are we getting the Brooklyn there? Brooklyn Bridge. There you go. The Brooklyn Bridge. It's my second time crossing the Brooklyn Bridge. You've crossed before, right? Uh, no, not no? quite first. First time? You have, right, Seneca? Yes. Yeah, okay. I crossed it back in 2014. So that was, what, like eight years ago? Nine years ago? What year are we? <laughs> eight years ago. Opened on May 24, 1883, the Brooklyn Bridge was the first fixed crossing of the East River. It was also the longest suspension bridge in the world at the time of its opening, with a main span of 1,595 feet or 486 metres, and a deck 127 feet or 39 metres above the river. time of the day to cross the Brooklyn Bridge pretty much just out from sunset so we're starting to get all those really nice colors here in the golden hour it's been an absolutely spectacular day and it's time for us now to get a well deserved well earned beer Alrighty, cool. So we're here at Time Out Market, and oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just smiling, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. who, who have we got here? We got Kyle. Yeah. And Lindsay. Lindsay, cool. Uh, let's get drunk. Brooklyn with old and new friends before heading up the East River by ferry. This is arguably the best way to explore the city at night and a great way to take in the dazzling lights of the city. we stopped for a nightcap at a local bar in Queens. The following day I head north of Manhattan to the suburb of Larchmont, where I catch up with an old adventure buddy at his home. Alrighty, I'm here in Larchmont with my good friend Andrew here. Hello, hello. Andrew and I met quite a while ago. We, we just realized it was 2013, right? Uh -huh. well, almost our 10 year anniversary. Almost, yeah, it is actually. I didn't even think uh -huh. about that. Yeah. Fe February, right? Yeah. We met, we were climbing buddies, tent mates. On those cold, cold nights. On a cold <laughs> night, we definitely <laughs> snuggled uh, for all you viewers out there while we climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. Highest mountain in Africa. Highest mountain in Africa. Coming up on the 10 year reunion, are we gonna climb it again? <laughs> we actually, our, our, our next our next charge is Rainier. Rainier, Rainier, okay. Yeah, yeah, we can do that um, at some stage. With with the staging point yeah. for Mount McKinley. Mount McKinley, you're right. Is, is, the, is, is my goal. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scope out Mount McKinley anyway, okay. or Mount Denali. Yeah. <laughs> On this trip yeah. and uh, I'll tell you how it looks but yeah we're here in Larchmont this is where Andrew lives now so uh, we're checking out the beach we're gonna have some lunch down here and just really take in this beautiful community so if you if you move the camera you'll see the Long Island Sound um, we're in a beautiful park Manor Park um, it's a couple hundred acre park which abuts the, the, the sound uh, beautifully manicured pass um, really meant to be a place of reflection um, just kind of gather your thoughts and then um, there's also a beach area that we're going to kind of hang out in. That's awesome. I 
finally, time for a short catch up with Andrew for lunch and a chance to admire the idyllic community he lives in before I return back to the city to meet up with Miranda. So we're in Midtown Manhattan. Chicky said she wanted me to buy her a gift, so she took me to this street called Fifth Avenue. No, I'm only joking. Uh, we're actually going to head right now to the Rockefeller, and uh, then we'll go on to Times Square. So just exploring a bit of the heart of the city, and then we'll head back up to the Upper West End, meet back up with Seneca. Cool. So we're here at the Rockefeller Plaza, and uh, as you can probably tell, it's Pride Month, so we have the rainbow flags everywhere. We're going to go to the top of this building up here and uh, get a fantastic view of the Manhattan skyline. Ascending up to the 67th floor of this iconic building, we explore three levels of uninterrupted views of the city from 850 feet or 260 meters above the streets of central Manhattan. to the top of the rock, the Rockefeller Center or the Rockefeller building and uh, we've got fantastic views of Manhattan behind us here with the Empire State Building right in the back there. Um, we've come in late afternoon to get some of that really nice lighting that you get uh, towards sunset time. Uh, unfortunately you do have to pay an additional $10 after 5.30pm but it is well worth it if you want to get some really good shots. The best time to come up here is around sunset which this time of the year is about 8.30 uh, and you can get some of the lights at night but uh, that's a little bit late for us because we're about to head to Times Square. Alright, Jiggy, where are we? Alrighty, so that's Times Square. It's pretty overwhelming right now that we're gonna head on back and uh, organize some plans for dinner and drinks tonight. That's crazy. I, I just need to really yuck them. It's definitely not cute. Jacob's pickles. Look at that! Look at everything! It's delicious! After leaving the city and heading back to Long Island, we stopped just outside of Brooklyn at an iconic attraction. Coney Island was the first of many lunar parks around the world, opened in 1903. Uh, it lived out its heydays in the first half of the 20th century and then started to go downhill after World War II and became a bit of a dilapidated area. Um, and then in the early 2000s or 2010s it uh, experienced a revival and uh, now it seems to be like a happening place which is cool. So we're keen to check out Coney Island. Patchogue, the suburb I grew up in, to catch up with some close friends from school. Hey guys. Hey, how are you? Good. 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 Good.
are you? Good. Hey. Who have we got here? Uh, Vincent from Long Island. <laughs> and, and Sam from Long Island, too. Sam went to school with Miranda. Me. We were best. Yes. <laughs> Known each other since seventh grade. Yeah. <laughs> and they've convinced me to go with the rocket fuel today. What is the rocket fuel, Vincent? So that is your pina colada topped with Bacardi 151. <laughs> that's the overproof stuff. That is the overproof <laughs> stuff. Is the, yeah. This is going to send you to the moon. That's why I go with rocket fuel. <laughs> and what was your reaction when you first tasted it? Holy F-balls. <laughs> <laughs> Great meal and atmosphere at Harbour Crab with an interesting live band that could only be described as folk meets punk. This is a good view of the house from here. Yeah. All right, so we're at Sam and Vinny's place and uh, I think this is the best way to get into a pool, right? <laughs> Although it's not wet anymore. <laughs> Woo! Uh, it's deeper than I expected. Yeah. Cool. So we are at Blue Point Brewing here in Long Island. Uh, trying out some of these really, really different and extraordinary flavors that we have here so i believe what we've got and i'm going to read these out because i'm a little confused is the carrot cake ale i don't know which one's which yet to be honest the rainbow italian ice sour the lemon love letter and the strawberry lemonade shandy so just gonna have a go at these cheers guys cheers sure that's got to be the sour did you want to try that one it's pretty sure. good yeah give it a go What do you think, Vinny? Sour? That's, like that's not my cup of tea. <laughs> like it. It's also 8% as well, so yeah. not only is it sour, it's really strong. Yeah. What's this one? This one? Oh no, I think this was the sour. That might have been the lemonade shandy. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. that's lemonade shammy. <laughs> Can I try that you one? gotta see my face for this. It's like, I, I, I think holy fuck. Can I try that one? <laughs> <laughs> So that's not the carrot cake then? No, no, that that's not the... Oh! That's the sour itself. <laughs> Your face! So that's probably the sour. That's, that's probably the sour. You've, you've had like the, the lemon warheads. Wow. Oh yeah. yeah. That's, that's well, probably that, like, the sour. Well, that like comes back to my mouth actually. It's tart. It's tart. Very tart. And then the carrot cake I've already had and that's actually really nice. It does kind of taste like carrot cake. It's got the cinnamon and the vanilla taste. It's kind of crazy that we're drinking beers and this is what I end up with. Yeah. <laughs> After saying our farewell to Sam and Vinny, we headed to a nearby 4th of July weekend celebration where Seneca's dad, Keith, fronted the lead act. Great American Cultural Day of Celebration wouldn't be complete without a few rounds of bowls.
Ladies. What have you got there? We've got some Ralph's Italian ices. Yeah. Something you have to get on Long Island. I haven't had it in years, so I've been craving it. So, <laughs> got three scoops. Hey, Crystal, why don't you introduce yourself? Say hi, hi to the YouTube world. <laughs> hi, YouTube world. I'm Crystal M. And you've from been Long Island. From Long Island. This is my beautiful cousin. <laughs> haven't been here in a little while. I'm happy to be having the Ralph's. And, and what have you got there? What, what have you got, ladies, got? I have watermelon and lemon. Nice. It's a water ice, so it's yep. also fat free. I've got cream ices, so I've got mint chip, vanilla chip, and toasted marshmallow. And how does an ice differ from an ice cream? Don't ask me. I have no idea. <laughs> Magic. Hi. It's a difference. Is Tay Tay <laughs> over here? Hi. I'm the hey, sister. What, what have you got there, Taylor? Lemon water ice. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Enjoy, ladies. Wait, what do you got? Mint chip. Mint chip. Ooh, yummy. Do you know? Do you know Aunt how Paula. it? Aunt Paula. Aunt oh. Paula got something. Hey, hey, we got an extra one. She got a vanilla cone with chocolate sprinkles. Does anyone know how an ice differs from an ice cream? Nope. No. No. Ah. Oh, we'll it's just the magic inside, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and we're in Patchogue, right? This is Patchogue, Patchog. Long Island. Patchog. Yeah, Main Street. It's off of Main Street. Patchogue. Woo. Island. Oh. Oh, that's my one. Alrighty, guys, happy 4th of July. Happy 4th. Alrighty, Chicky, where are we? We are in the Great South Bay. And that is? We're looking at Fire Island right now. Heading back out into the Great South Bay, this time also joined by my sister Taylor and her fiance Aaron. We soak up the vibrant colours of another spectacular sunset before witnessing the 4th of July fireworks displays which from our vantage point seem to last many hours into the night. After celebrating America's independence and saying our farewells to family and friends, we board a flight to Vancouver, Canada to start a journey over two years in the making. Our great Canada and Alaska trip that was cancelled due to the pandemic in 2020. This epic adventure will be featured in our upcoming episodes. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed our content, please like and subscribe. And we'd love if you could leave us a comment, letting us know what you've enjoyed or what you'd like to see more of. And help us grow our channel, become part of the Global Travel Stories family by sharing with friends, family, or anyone you think would enjoy our content. Thanks guys.